Hi everybody, this is Matt Breckwald, and welcome back to another episode of Off Farm Income, episode number 006. Ideas for the ultimate lifestyle business of agriculture. Hey, thank you very much for coming back and tuning in again to listen to me and special guests talk about different agricultural service businesses and different pathways into farming and agriculture for you, me, and everybody else. Today's special guest will be discussing how she combined her love of farming and photography. And I'm going to give you some links in the show notes and at the end of the podcast to her website and her blog. But I just want to say right now that her, her photography and her farm photographs and the things that she's got up on her website and her blog are fantastic. I am very jealous. And uh, I see me taking a class from her in the future at some point on how to take photographs like that, which she does teach online and we'll talk about uh, during the podcast interview. But before we begin, I want to give a special thanks to you, our listeners. So I officially released my first podcast December 18th. Here we are on January, oh, it should be January 9th when you're receiving this podcast, when this podcast comes out. And we are fast approaching 600 downloads. As a matter of fact, I have not checked this morning. We could already be there, which is extremely exciting for me. Uh, 600 in the whole world of podcasting may not be significant, but to me it's huge. I can't believe that this quickly, in less than a month, have over 600 listeners to this podcast. So that is really exciting, and I can't thank you enough for tuning in and giving us a chance to uh, explore these common interests that we have with you. Also, exciting stuff in the news in the world of the Off-Farm Income Podcast is we have people listening from as far away as Pakistan as well as Australia. And I know Australia is a very, very rich agricultural country and continent. I don't know about Pakistan, but thank you very much for listening from that far away. Uh, That just blows my mind that people have found us and are listening from that far away. So thank you so much. Also, a special thanks to those of you who have clicked through our Amazon link. We really appreciate that in supporting our show and helping to keep us going forward. And uh, that is just very, very nice that you did that. Thank you so much for doing that. And thank you for all the support. And let's let's get on to this week's interview. Hi, everybody. This is Matt. Welcome back to the Off Farm Income Podcast. And today we've got a special guest all the way from Waverly, Virginia, Jennifer Warthen, the owner of Warthen Farms Photography and the main blogger and owner of thecottonwife.com. How are you today, Jennifer? I'm great. How are you, Matt? Great. Thank you so much for speaking with me again. I just want to tell everybody listening that you've already been gracious enough to speak with me and be interviewed by me one prior time, but then I had to have you back on so we could do this on the (laughs) podcast so everybody could hear. That's great. Yeah, and last time we spoke, I was so impressed with some of the innovative things you're doing in photography um, that I definitely wanted to share this with everybody. So thank you again for coming back on. You're welcome. Well, I'm having you on today because uh, you have found a way to kind of marry together uh, your love and your passion for agriculture and the fact that you and your husband farm uh, with your eye for photography and the things you're doing in photography. And so to me, this seemed like something that a lot of people who love photography and love agriculture, they would love to know how to mesh these two things together. So that's why I wanted to talk with you again today. And uh, we'll just kind of start off with a couple questions. And if you could tell us uh, just a little bit about you personally. Uh, Well, my husband and I uh, farm about 600 acres uh, in Virginia. We have four children, and um, it actually works out great with my business. My office is right across the field from our house, and so, you know, I spend my days sort of juggling everything, juggling kids, juggling meals, laundry. (laughs) Um, Never quite know where I'm going to be, but that's okay. Uh, Every day is, is busy and interesting, and things never get boring. I bet. And how long have you been doing this? I first picked up a camera when my um, third daughter was born, so about six years. Okay, all right. And so can you give us just kind of an overview of your business, uh, what you're doing with the photography and, and the blog as well? Okay, uh, I, the, blog, the blog came first. Um, I was 
on like an internet forum, like chat forum, um, with a bunch of people, most of whom lived in a city, and they had no clue what we did all day long. Um, you know, a lot of people think you just ride on the tractor, you plant your crops, and then you sit around, you know. Um, it doesn't really happen that way. You know, sitting on a tractor is probably the, the thing that we do the least, maybe. Sure. Um, so I started the blog to sort of give them an insight into what we did all day long. Um, and then, of course, you know, taking pictures for the blog. So I want better and better pictures for that. Um, and then, like I said, I bought a DSLR when my third daughter was born. And immediately people started asking me to take pictures. Um, and I, I, I started way before I was ready. Um, but it just grew from there. Word of mouth spread. And, um, you know, before long, friends of friends were asking me to take pictures, and, and I was booking sessions left and right. So, um, so I've definitely grown as the business has grown. I'm not sure I recommend that, but um, but it, it seemed to work for me. Well, there's probably not a perfect model out there, but uh, if you're having success and enjoying yourself, uh, we'll take it, right? Right, right, exactly. So I, you know, now I find myself mostly taking pictures of... Uh, families and children that seems to you know be my specialty I don't, I don't limit myself to that um but that that kind of seems to be where things have settled and it sounds to me kind of like in and, and this is kind of a recurring theme on the off-farm income podcast but it sounds to me like your business kind of chose you that you found something that you enjoyed and you were passionate about and lo and behold it developed into a business for you is that a fair statement that's exactly what happened mm-hmm so you said that you started taking photographs when your daughter was born, and then people started requesting you to take photographs for them. How in the world did these people know that you were doing that, and how did they know the quality of your work that they started to demand it for themselves? Uh, well, two things really you know, were happening at the time. Uh, the first thing was that uh, I was teaching school, and then you know my husband figured out that I took lunch for him every day if I stopped teaching, so... Uh, I stopped teaching school. I had a daycare mm-hmm. on the farm, which actually was another great business in and of itself. You know, who doesn't want their kid to be on a farm? No kidding. Um, but I was taking pictures of those kids as well and just handing the parents a CD at the end of the day and saying, oh, here, you know, I took these pictures of your kid today. I thought you'd want them. They started showing those to family and friends. Um, so that was, you know, one way that my business branched off. And the other way was that everybody was just kind of getting into Facebook at the time. Okay. So I was sharing lots of pictures um, on Facebook, you know, being a, a rural woman and sitting in the house all day, you, you know, um, not really having a ton of interaction um, with other adults. Facebook was, you know, pretty huge to me. It was a welcome, you know, change in my day, um, way to communicate. And so I was sharing lots on there. And so... That's the other way that people saw my pictures and saw my work, and it was things were shared. And it's it, Facebook is the whole reason my business exploded. I'm, I'm convinced of that. Um, and it was probably the biggest thing that that led to my business becoming a reality. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, that's interesting, and I I love that story that uh, you were proactive. Um, another recurring theme on our show is working for free, going out and, and doing things and not necessarily expecting anything in return right at first. And you were extremely proactive in taking those photographs and just providing those uh, to your customers when they came to pick up their kids. And lo and behold, it led you into this aspect of your career. Right. I, you know, I didn't think anything of it at the time. Um, <laughs> But, you know, I, I do try to keep that in mind whenever I want to do something new, if I want to add a new segment to my business, you know, not to be afraid to essentially offer a sample of your work, mm-hmm. um, especially if you know it's going to be seen. Sure. No, that's wonderful. That's always a good idea. And, and that's something that as I speak with uh, people who've developed businesses uh, – you know, around the country, specifically to agriculture, is they've got such a passion for doing it that many of those people have started out by just doing what they want to do for free because they want to do it. And all of a sudden, people recognize mm-hmm. the value, and lo and behold, it turns into the business. So that's a great story. Um, so getting into the nuts and bolts of how you did this a little bit, let's talk about marketing for a second and how you marketed your business. 
Obviously, um, word of mouth as you started distributing photographs out to people and they started sharing those. Um, and then you mentioned Facebook. If you could talk a little bit about how you've used Facebook and then maybe other marketing methods you've used. Okay. Um, well, like I said, Facebook has been the biggest thing for me. It, I mean, it, it's still to this day my number one marketing tool. Um, I have a you know a business page as they want you to do. They don't just want to want you to run everything from your personal profile. Sure. So if you have a business page, um, I'm I friend all of my clients um, mostly so that I can tag them in their pictures. So okay. if I put a picture up of them on their on my business page, I can tag them in it, which means all of their friends see it. Um, so that's kind of the thing about Facebook is you don't want it to be limited to just the people who like your page or uh-huh. um, just the people that you are friends with. You want it, you want to be able to spread that word around so, um, in the biggest way possible. So if I'm under- so I try to find you know lots of ways. Okay. To, uh, to utilize Facebook in the best way. So, um, can I ask you the word, the word to spread and get people to see my pictures? So, let me ask you a quick question about that, Jennifer. So, um, and then of course, other social media has been really great too. Instagram, Pinterest, uh, those are two other things I use a lot. Okay. So, Jennifer, let me ask you about tagging. Um, you mentioned tagging uh, your customers so their friends can see the photographs. So, the way that works is Am I understanding this correctly, that uh, when you tag the photos that you've taken of your customers, their friends start to see those photographs on Facebook, and then can they automatically figure out that you took those photographs? Yes. Um, most of the time I put my name, uh, you know, a watermark, I guess, on the image itself. Um, but then when I tag them, they can also see, you know, my business page name um, and my information. There most of the time in the if I remember to do it um, in the description you know where unless you put in the description of the picture I'll put my email telephone number and things like that. Okay. So that's really helpful too. Okay, and so then they see the quality of your photographs and that maybe makes them think, oh, I want to have this too. They may not have even known they wanted to have those done until they see those. Right. Right. Exactly. Um, you know, and it, it can be several things that, that make them want it, you know. Um, sometimes it's just the fact that somebody else has something, you know, which I'll go with. You know, that, that works for me, too. Um, but then other times, you know, they, they see a quality in my picture. They see, you know, a connection. Um, sometimes it's just the scenery. You know, they, they don't have access to farms. They don't have access, um, you know, to places, live open places like this and, and they want that. They want, you know, just a place for their kids to run and play and for them to interact naturally as a family um, sure. without a lot of things around, with all, without a lot of noise. Um, so sometimes that's the reason they contact me. Very good. And then relating this back to agriculture, do you go and take photographs of people or of places on other people's farms for them specific to agriculture? Yes, I do. Um, I have a lot of people contact me. Um, because I, I'm a, a farm photographer, you know, be, because that's sort of what I specialize in, um, I think they, you know, they assume that I'll under, you know, have a better understanding of, of what they're wanting. Um, and, you know, it's just, they like the look, the natural kind of look of my photos anyway. So sometimes I'm, I'm contacted, you know, because I do take pictures on our farm. I see. Is there a trust level there from people who live and work in rural communities and in farm-related industries and in agriculture to where they look at you and, and see that you live on a farm and that you're actually farming for a living? Is there a trust issue there compared to, say, a photographer coming out of the city or something like that? Uh, I, I think so. You know, I, I think that they know that I'll I'll get it, you know, that um, that I'll, I'll get what they want that um you know if they have a special request that i'll understand why they request why they are requesting that sure um i I think there's just yeah there is a level of understanding and trust there that that might not exist otherwise okay and so you know one of the things that we really like to talk about on the off-farm income podcast is startup costs and 
we kind of like to dispel the myth that for somebody to start a successful business where they can actually make a good income to help supplement their, their farm income or whatever it may be, we like to dispel the myth that they're going to have to go into piles of debt um, or they're going to have startup costs that are in the six figures or something like that. Um, how did you fund your business in the beginning and was it really cost prohibitive? Um, no, it, it wasn't at all. Photography probably has one of the lowest barriers to entry, you know, of any career, really. Um, if you don't get too equipment happy, and uh, which is really easy to do, but sure. if you kind of bring yourself in um, and only purchase the necessary equipment, you know, startup costs could be anywhere from five hundred to a thousand dollars. Okay. Um, you know, to get good quality equipment. Um, but not, you don't have to spend a huge amount right up front. Okay. So the barriers to entry are low and somebody with an interest in photography anyway, likelihood they're probably going to have, uh, some decent equipment and they can go out and get started. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. And so, um, we were talking about marketing prior to me asking you that. Are there any other methods that you use to market your business beyond Facebook and word of mouth? Occasionally, for weddings, I'll do bridal shows. I'm headed to one tomorrow um, in Maryland. Um, but other than that, no, not really. Um, I, I don't really, you know, advertise in, in a lot of places. Um, word of mouth seems to keep me really busy. Um, and then by, you know, by word of mouth, I, I mean, I'm including Facebook in that just because of the way that it spreads uh, through friends and friends of friends. Okay. Um, but I don't really have to do any paid advertising. Well, let me ask you this. Was there a point in time uh, during the development of your photography business where you went, wow, this is really going to work. This is really going to be something that I'm going to be able to do? There, there was. Uh, that one very specific day. Um, I remember telling my husband, you know, nobody's looking. I, I don't understand why it's just not working. And he said to me uh, that his dad had sat behind the counter of his feed and feed for a solid year before customers started coming in. And once they did, you know, there was no stopping them. Sure. And that night or, or pretty soon after, I sat down to Facebook and I typed out a very simple statement on my feed. I said, fall is booking up quickly. You need to go ahead and book your portraits if you'd like to get a date. You know, something to that effect. Mm -hmm. It completely made up. I mean, I was I wasn't booking anything, but you know, it was fall, and um, you know, I was kind of hoping that things would get busy. But no, there was no truth to that statement whatsoever. Uh -huh. But I typed it out anyway, and I think I booked four sessions that night. The next day, a few more. The next day, a few more, and. That fall on the on the weekend, I would have up to eight sessions. Really, on the on the weekend, it was it, it exploded after that. And so then, of course, I have pictures to put on Facebook on my business page to tag people in. Sure. And if I'm doing all this session, you know, you can imagine how many people were seeing the pictures. Right. So it things just went crazy after I did that. So that's an interesting point too. That you everybody seems to start off slow. Uh, but once you mm -hmm. get started and once you get rolling, um, if you're doing things right and you're producing a good product, it seems to snowball to where all of a sudden it almost is overwhelming. Yeah, it, it has at times been very overwhelming. Um, so, you know, you almost have to purposely slow things down a little bit. Um, like I said, we have this farm and I have four children, so I would, I would love to be able to have all the time in the world for photography, but I don't. Um, so sometimes you have to slow things down just a tad bit. Sure, sure. Well, that that is a great story, and I've I've had similar experience uh, in my business as well. That my first year, I started off, and I was really struggling to establish my reputation and have people even know I was out there. But once that started rolling, then I just couldn't believe how fast the business grew. So that's that's a great piece of information. Thank you. Let me ask you about advice. Um, if, there's some, if there's somebody out there 
who's listening to this and they would like to start a business similar to yours um, and to get it to the level that you're at, uh, if you could think of two or three pieces of advice for them, if they were asking you right now, what would you tell them? Um, I'd tell them to work on their skills, you know, before they jump into anything. I really do wish that I had done that because, you know, now I look back at some of the pictures I've taken and I grin and, and you know, I go into my friends' houses and see their pictures that, that I took of them a long time ago and it's just, oh, that's just not a good moment, you know. Sure. <laughs> no, that's not fun. That's not fun at all. Um, so really work on your skill set um, because now, you know, photography is everywhere and, and people sort of have a better idea of what to look for. Uh, so they're going to be looking for higher quality pictures. Um, and then no matter what business you're in, no matter what you're doing, take some business classes or, you know, just read some books about business. Don't just, um, for instance, photographers. You know, they'll read photography books. They go on photography websites. And that's all great. Mm -hmm. You really need to go on some business websites, too. You need to read some books about business. Sure. Um you sort of you need to know what you're doing as far as customer service, sales, management, things like that are so very important. Um, sometimes almost secondary to the quality of the pictures. Well, and I agree with you. I feel like the people who are successful in business, they put the whole package together. Um, there may be somebody out there who's more talented at taking photographs, but if they can't market their business and get the word out, if they can't deal with people if they can't uh, appropriately handle the expenses and the income of their business, then they're not going to be able to be successful. Right. Um, now, speaking of that and talking about how you started this business out, um, you mentioned that you look back on your first photo your first photographs and you kind of cringe. Um, <laughs> And I think a lot of people have that experience when they do anything that uh, is artistic because even though we've started a professional business, we're still developing and we're still building expertise and we're still working towards that point in time where we're the very top and we're the very best. Is your advice, would your advice to be once you have that basic skill level to start? Because I think a lot of people get caught up in, no, I need to be a little bit better, I need to be a little bit better, I need to be a little bit better. And then they just never get off the ground because they're waiting for that moment of perfection. What is? What right. do you think that, about that? That is easy to do. That, that's really easy to get caught up in. Um, but, yeah, take, you know, take some basic classes, get, um, get some technical things under your belt. Um, and then by all means start. You know, um, everybody has to start somewhere. You can call it whatever you want. You know, you can work for free. You can call it portfolio building. Um, and that way people know that you're just getting started, so their expectations maybe aren't, you know, sky high. Sure. Um, but, yeah, you know, and, and always be upfront with people about where your skill set is and, and where you are in the business. Sure. Um, but, yeah, but don't be afraid to just start either. Yeah, get going. Get that ball rolling. Right, Exactly. Okay. Well, I've got some more technical questions for you just to help uh, people out there understand kind of putting together a plan when they get started. Did you write a formal business plan or did this, did the business plan kind of develop as you move forward in the, in your business? It sort of developed as I moved forward and I can't even tell you how many times I've gotten the advice to write a business plan and two things. It, it just never seems to be the right time to sit down and write one down. And the other thing is, I honestly could not have imagined where this business would have gone. Um, if I had sat down six years ago and written out a five-year plan, I don't. it probably would have been very interesting to look back on because it would have sure. resembled nothing that I've done. Um, I've had so many opportunities and met incredible people through this business and, and you know, done things, not only, you know, meaningful things like newborns, but... You know, I've photographed, um, you know, I just photographed my friend's grandmother's funeral. And, you know, things like that are not something that I would have ever written down. And, and certainly, you know, maybe not even something that I, I show or used to market. But it, in terms of it growing my business and growing who I am as a person, um, it, it's just incredibly valuable. And, and so I'm not even really sure what I'd write down if I wrote down a plan. Sure. Even now. Well, and I think that's kind of one of those recurring themes that we see as well is that when people are looking into starting a business, they might go onto the Small Business Administration website or something like that, 
and see mm-hmm. these big overwhelming uh, business plans that they give you advice on writing. And it just seems like I have no idea, but I've got this core idea and I want to start. And while everyone's got a plan, I think sometimes it's pretty informal. Right. So did you right. in, did you incorporate your business and form an LLC or are you a sole proprietor? How did you deal with liability issues and things like that? Um, I am a sole proprietor. Uh, I did actually, you know, visit an accountant and do that the right way. I do recommend doing that, <laughs> going through all of those steps. Sure. And uh, he he recommended that I stay a sole proprietor. So that's what I've done. Okay. All right. And I usually ask, what is the one piece of equipment that you must have to get started? But that seems like a silly question in your case. I would assume the answer <laughs> is camera. Yeah, you kind of have to have a camera. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, and so... Over the years, you've it sounds to me like you've grown and expanded your business, um, and Facebook has been the primary method. Um, are you offering more products and services now than when you first began? No, I'm offering less. Um, okay. I think you sort of find what you do best, and you concentrate on that. Um, I, I do. I tell people, and, and and this is the truth that I like to photograph them through all stages of their life. So. Take, you know, a high school senior, for instance. You know, I love photographing her at that stage of her life. And then in a few years, you know, when she gets married and then when she has her first child and then their family photos. You know, I really love that progression. Um, But it does seem like I do more family and children photos than anything. And that if I had to pick one thing, you know, that I could photograph for the rest of my life, it it would be that. Okay. So I I kind of narrowed down, you know, my scope and... um, on what I do best. Okay. And um, I, I do recommend that because, you know, I, I kind of don't want to be, you know, a garden variety where people are just like, oh, I need someone with a camera. I'll call Jennifer. I, wanna, I want someone to be like, I need a picture of my family. I'm going to call Jennifer. I understand. And when you and I spoke before, we talked a little bit about um, you doing webinars um, and mm-hmm. teaching people how to take photographs. Have you kind of scaled back from that as well? No, that has, that's grown. Okay. Um, we took a rental house on our farm and turned it into my studio. It has three bedrooms, so people fly in from all over. They come stay the weekend, um, and we have pretty much retreat-style workshops where we spend the whole weekend together just immersed in photography, taking, you know, have families come out, take pictures of them, wander around the farm, choose locations. Uh, different things like that. And, and then I do also teach them online as well. Oh, great. Okay. Mm-hmm. So what time of the year should our listeners expect themselves to be the busiest if they decide to enter into photography? Fall is my busiest time of the year. People go crazy for those fall colors. Um, you know, the first thing they ask when they contact me is when is peak season for the colors. Okay. <clears throat> Which, you know, can be kind of tricky to nail down. Uh, so I've learned a few little editing tricks to always make it look like peak season. <laughs> okay. Um, but definitely fall. All right. And um, I assume in Virginia you just have beautiful colors in the fall to take photographs of. We do. We do. I mean, it depends on the rainfall, but, um, yeah, everything is, you know, just beautiful from the colors of the crops. I mean, Soybeans, even you know, yeah. are gorgeous to take pictures in. Um, to the trees, everything looks great in the fall. See, that's one of those pieces of expertise in agriculture. I don't think a photographer coming out of the city would have is that you could get beautiful photographs in soybeans. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Soybeans seem kind of plain, but when they turn yellow, they're really beautiful. Yeah, very pretty. Okay, so is this business your sole form of income? Uh, for me personally, yes. Yes, it is. It's what I do full time. Okay. All right. And, um, and then you said before that you guys are a farming family as well. Is that correct? Right. Okay. Um, and then what are you guys farming? Uh, we farm corn, cotton, soybeans, peanuts, wheat, and rye. Oh, that is so different than what I am used to out here in the West. That, that's very, very interesting. I've always had uh, Virginia on my list of states I'd love to farm in. I think it's a great state. Yeah, yeah, I bet you guys don't have peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> no peanuts, nope. 
All right. So what was stopping you, if anything, uh, from becoming an entrepreneur in the beginning? Was there ever any resistance, anything you had to overcome uh, to get yourself to do this? No, I just sort of blindly you know, went into it when people started calling me and uh, those friends of friends started calling me. I just, sure, you know, what time and place and you know, I'll meet you there if it was, you know, at their place or whatever and, um, you know, what time you want to come out. I, I really just jumped in whole hog. Great. And in the development of your business, if you can think of a piece of business advice that you've received, what, what would be the best one? Promise. I'm sorry. Under promise and over deliver. I got that mixed up. <laughs> okay. Under promise and over deliver. Um, you know, I, th- I think when you're delivering a good product and you're delivering it on time, that that means the world to people. Each one, you know, each one is important. You know, having that a good photograph would, that meets people's expectations, but also delivering it in a very timely manner. Sure. Um, I've had so many people tell me that they haven't received their wedding photographs after six months or, you know, that they didn't, I kind of did a little bit of graphic design for a little while and, you know, they wouldn't receive something for a couple months, you know, from their previous graphic designer. And that's very frustrating. Sure. Um, when you're, when you're a client. And um, so I always, always, you know, try to be so good about getting things out on time. Well, and I think in a world, or at least the world we're living in in the United States, my personal belief is that the emphasis on customer service tends to be diminishing in all aspects of business. Um, that's how it feels right. as, as a consumer. So um, that that advice to under-promise and over-deliver, if you do that, I think you shock and astonish people to well, they'll, they'll never forget that experience. You do. So do you have a personal habit that helps you be successful? that you could share with us? Hmm. (laughs) A personal habit that helps me be successful. Um, hmm. You know, for some people, it's I get up every morning at 5 and I just have some time to think about the day or something like that. Right. I think it kind of goes back to my last answer. You know, I'm just always really careful about um, carving out work time no matter what's going on in my day. Um, no matter what the kids need or, you know, how many trucks I have to help move out on the farm, I'm always going to find time for what I promised that client or, you know, to just even sit down at the computer for five to ten minutes and um, and get out what I promised. Sure. Um, it, it, really, it really bugs me if I don't do that, if I let something just sit out there for a day or two even. Uh, that just, I can't even, I can't even stand that. <laughs> just, it's like it's, it's it's like a knot in the pit of my stomach if I let that happen. Um, so I always need time during the day to, to do what I promised the client. Okay. And of the books or the web resources that you use to help you develop or you're still using to help you develop, um, if you had to pick one to recommend for somebody else who was going to be starting a business, um, what would one of those be? Um, honestly, I really like, oh, I talked, you know, about how important the business aspect is. Yes. Um, and the book that I liked the most about business was probably Bossy Pants by Tina Fey. Really? Um, I read that a few, a few years ago, um, I guess when it came out and, uh, it, it helps me so much to know about being, you know, capital letters, the boss, um, and how, you know, it's okay to be confident and it was okay to, you know, ask for things and, you know, to get what you want. And um, it was a great book about being in business and, and just being the boss of things. I had no idea that that book was about business. Uh, we're big 30 Rock fans out here in Idaho and mm-hmm. uh, have watched every episode of that with Tina Fey and, and have laughed hysterically, but I had no idea that that book was about business. That's a really great piece of advice. I'm going to pick that up myself. Okay. Well, great. Can you think of... It's really funny. (laughs) Is it? It's So she's mixing comedy in with her business advice? Oh, yeah. It's hilarious. Oh, good. Well, that's exciting. I'll uh, I'll have to grab that. I'm probably going to grab it uh, on Audible and listen to it uh, on the on the iPhone when I'm out to doing my my business, but I will definitely do that. Thank you for that piece of advice. Hey, everybody, just a quick break. That book that Jennifer was talking about, Bossy Pants by Tina Fey, of course, is linked in in the show notes. 
and on the website as a user recommended book or as a uh, interviewee recommended book. So if you'd like that book, do us the favor, click through the Amazon link on the Off Farm Income podcast and purchase it there. Thanks and enjoy the rest of the show. Well, Jennifer, if people listening to this podcast want to contact you in the future, what is the best way for them to get a hold of you? Uh, probably email. Um, okay. I do most everything through my smartphone, as I guess most people's email. Okay. Um, and my email address is jennifer at morrisonfarms.com. Okay. And I will put that email address as well as the uh, website for your photography business and your blog in the show notes. So okay. the listeners can have access to that and can reach out to you if they'd like to explore having you take some photographs or possibly even uh, get taught how to take photographs by you. That'd be great. Well, great. Well, this has been a real pleasure for the second time. Thank you so much uh, for coming on the Off Farm Income Podcast, and this has been a wealth of knowledge. Thank you so much for helping everybody out. Thank you. All right, Jennifer. Good luck to you, and I uh, look forward to speaking to you again in the future. All right. Thanks so much. You bet. All right. Well, a special thanks to Jennifer Warthen for coming on the podcast and discussing her different take on combining her entrepreneurial interests with agriculture today. That is just fantastic. And like I said, I've interviewed her twice now, and both times have been such a pleasure, and she's been so impressive to speak with. So thank Jennifer by going to thecottonwife.com. I'll have a link in the show notes to her blog, uh, but going there and leaving her a comment or going on Twitter at the Cotton Wife and thanking her there for the time she spent with us today and the information that she gave to all of you. So leave her a comment, give her a thumbs up, do something like that. Also, if you go to her blog, and I'll link into this too, um, she has some absolutely great photographs on her blog and you're going to want to check those out. Uh, everything from capturing farm memories or learning how to catch farm or to capture farm memories are all there for you. And so go ahead and check out her website and her blog and give her a shout. And remember that if you want to learn how to take photographs of your farm in the way that she does hers and other people's, uh, she teaches classes online and would be happy to help get you up and going and get you to that level of performance with your camera. Okay, so for show feedback and guest suggestions on the Off Farm Income podcast, you can contact me Matt at offincome.com, offincome.com. You may wonder why my website URL is not offfarmincome.com. Well, ironically, that URL was available, but I didn't pull the trigger, and I went back about a week later to buy it, and somebody else had bought it. And I don't know how that works. If somebody had figured out that I was shopping for that and thought, oh, this might be one I can resell later, but it was gone. So I am offincome.com. Also, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, five ways you can support off-farm income. Here they are. Here's a great list of five ways you can help support off-farm income and keep us going. Number one, you can go on our Facebook page at off-farm income and you can just hit that like button and you can help us out in that way and like us on Facebook. You can follow me on Twitter at Matt Breckwald. That's M-A-T-T-B-R-E-C-H-W-A-L-D. And that is the Off Farm Income Twitter handle, but that is my personal Twitter handle, at Matt Breckwald. You can subscribe to the Off Farm Income on iTunes or Stitcher. Please do. I would love to see your subscription on iTunes or on Stitcher. You can click through our Amazon links to buy recommended books or other products. And as always, that's very much appreciated because that helps keep us going with the bills that we have to pay around here. And last and certainly not least, tell a friend about the Off Farm Income podcast. If you've got somebody out there that is has a passion for agriculture or is interested in starting their own business, boy, if you could tell them about our podcast, that goes so far. Uh, word of mouth is how people find out about what we're doing here. And if you can help us with that, we would be so appreciative. So tell somebody in person or tell them on the internet, tell them on the web, tell them on your Twitter feed, tell them on your Facebook, wherever it may be, but spread the word. We'd really appreciate that. All right. Well, hey, have a great seven days until I talk to you again and go enjoy the ultimate lifestyle business, agriculture.